It's been three years since Windows 7. Uh, Windows 7 came out. Uh, we were all in a world where it was very much focused around uh, laptops. Uh, now it's broadened out to you're carrying smartphones, you're carrying uh, ultrabooks, you're carrying uh, uh, la uh, tablet computers. What will people notice, first of all, that's different about Windows 8, and how do you guys bridge the gap between the mobile and the physical world that we, we used to know? Sure. I think the first thing people will notice when they walk into a retail store tomorrow, John, is the broad range of uh, form factors that are available in terms of the, of the PCs. From really lightweight tablets through to full-powered PC tablets, through to convertibles and hybrids, all the way through to desktops and all-in-ones, many of which are touchscreen. Uh, so that's the first thing I think people will really notice is, is different in terms of Windows 8. The second thing is, Windows 8 has become a very personalized experience, and I can demonstrate that now in a moment. And so you'll see a lot of personalization, a lot of opportunity to customize Windows 8. I would imagine that there will no, be no two Windows 8 devices in the world which will be the same between two users. So this is the start screen, and this is a picture of my two boys. Uh, and this is a theme that you'll see running throughout Windows 8, is that it is a very personalized experience. I am getting on the lock, the lock screen uh, a number of different uh, pieces of information so I see what my next appointment is, how many emails are waiting for me and so on and so forth. There's no more control all to leave with Windows 8, it's far more intuitive uh, and, and user friendly if you like. And this is the login screen. This is a feature called Picture Password. Now I can still log in using an alphanumeric password but this is a far more interesting way of logging in and authenticating myself. This is Picture Password and that, this is a picture of my son James and I have associated with this picture three finger strokes that are known only to me. So I touch his ear, I touch his nose, I swipe his smile, and I'm in. Now one of the things you'll see there, John, is how fast it is to log in. Windows 8 has been built upon Windows 7, so it has the same, it inherits the same robustness that we uh, associate with Windows 7, but it has been optimized. It uses less disk, less processor, and less memory, so it runs faster. It boots up faster, it logs in faster, and it shuts down faster, and it's a very fast and fluid experience. Uh, in between. It's when you see the start screen that you really realize Windows has really uh, has, has come a long way. This is the most fundamental redesign of the uh, Windows operating system since Windows 95 nearly 20 years ago. So the start screen is where I get access to all my apps, all my files, all my stuff. Uh, we use what are called live tiles to represent these apps, and you'll see them here. They're scrolling through information, a lot of which is coming down from the cloud in real time, and it's information that is personal to me. And this is what I talked about earlier on in terms of being a very personalized experience and a very unique experience to me. For example, the weather is showing what the weather is doing in Dublin right now in the weather app. The, uh, my photos are scrolling through my photos. I have pinned from the people app a number of different contacts to the home screen here, to the, to the start screen here, and that is uh, cycling through any information that they post to Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and so forth. And that's the People app. And so it's scrolling through that information as soon as they, as they uh, populate uh, any of those social networks. So that's the start screen. I guess the best thing to do now is actually to take you into a couple of apps and give you a feel for it. So let's have a look at the weather app. And so this is showing me the weather in Dublin. Obviously, I can set it to any, it to any city. It's, it's a pretty depressing picture, actually, uh, in terms of today's weather. One of the things you'll notice here is that there is no window anymore, despite the name of the product. So there is no window around. There's no Chrome. There's no Maximize, Minimize buttons. If I want to control the app, I pull down from above, and I get whatever controls the app designer has associated with this app. I touch the screen, and they all disappear. So content is king here. It's all about the... Uh, content that is associated with that app. Apps typically scroll uh, right to left, and another thing I can do is I can pinch out and get access to all the different features of that app and navigate directly through to, in this case, the maps that are associated with, uh, with the, the weather app. Now, at any point, I can scroll from the, I can pull from the right hand side uh, and I'll they're see. They're the charms. They're, they're the charms, right. that's right. They're the five essential control points that are associated with Windows 8. Search, share, the start button, which I'll press now in a moment, devices for controlling my devices, and then the various different settings that are associated uh, with, with Windows. So I can click on start at any point, and I'm back out to the start screen. The app is still running in the background, but it's using no resources, and therefore I can have as many apps running as I want. Let's take a look at another app. This is the travel app. 
and it's actually set to, to uh, it's showing me uh, Dublin here. And so again, I scroll from, from the right to the left, I get maps, I get uh, flight information, photos, uh, panoramic views. Uh, also, it's scrolling through a feed from two different sources, from folders and from farmers, in terms of the best attractions, the best hotels, the best restaurants, and so forth. Now, I have two apps open at the moment, as you know, so, and I can scroll bet between them, and actually there's my desktop as well. I can scroll between any apps that I have open at any point uh, by, by scrolling in from the left-hand side, by pulling in from the <coughs> left-hand side. Everything that I'm showing you here, John, can be done with a mouse and keyboard, and that's a very important point. So I'm just using touch here, but I can absolutely do this with just mouse and keyboard. In fact, everyone in Microsoft Ireland is using Windows 8 at the moment, and probably 90% of those plus are using Windows 8 on a non-touch device. So let's go into the store and have a quick look at that. So that's a result of a, of a search that I did earlier on. So we'll see that there is a spotlight on a number of different apps here. We have a new app from the Irish Times. We have uh, an app from GAA, absolutely fantastic app um, that we can show you now in a moment. Skype have a new app uh, which, which, which uh, got loaded into the store in the, last, uh, in the last 24 hours. And we have games and we have social and all sorts of different categories. And you can pick your top free or you can go in and purchase apps uh, and download them. They, they, they uh, load typically in, in you know, under 20 seconds. Supposing I'm in Internet Explorer uh, and I come to a particular web page, so let's see, uh, maybe I'm, I'm on, uh, let's, let's do this, uh, not Silicon. Okay, so I go into the Silicon Republic website and I'm on a particular, uh, I'm on a particular story uh, let's say about AirGrid, mm -hmm. and I say, you know what, I know someone is going to be interested in that. I pull from the right-hand side, I get my charms, and now I share that web page. Nice. It's now offering me every app that has a share contract associated with it. So in this case, I'm just going to mail this link to someone. Now what I'll do is I'll mail that to, to myself. Uh, so patrickwoutlook.com, click send, and that will come in through my, through my mail app now in a moment. So it's a great way of sharing things. I can also go into, for example, SkyDrive and share all my folders and share my photos and so on and so forth. Now we mentioned Internet Explorer there. Let me show you another, cool, uh, another few uh, cool features that are associated with this. The point is, this is Internet Explorer 10. And it's the latest version of Internet Explorer. It comes with Windows 8. But it is radically different than before. This is a touch-first browser. And I'll, let me show you what I mean by that. I pull down from the top, and I see my tabs. Those tabs are much bigger. They're bigger blocks so that I can select them with my finger. If I'm using mouse and keyboard, I can absolutely select them. But if I want to create a new tab here, it's no problem. Uh, it's very easy to, to navigate your way around uh, through touch. Down here, you'll see my pinned, frequent, and favorite uh, apps. And so again, these are big blocks to enable me to select these things uh, using my finger if I'm, if I'm uh, using touch. Let me show you a couple of really cool things, though. With a touch-enabled browser, there's a whole range of new functionality that's available to a web designer. This is an app called Glimpse from a company called uh, The Find. This is a retail catalog app. And so they have a whole load of different uh, retail catalogs. This one is from Nordstrom, the, the US retailer. And check this out. Remember, we're in the browser here. We're not in, we're not in an app. This isn't something running natively. This is running within the browser. Sweet. And that can only be done on, on a, on a touch-enabled uh, browser. Let me show you a couple of other things. So you, know, you, you get the idea. You leaf through the, uh, the catalog. Just a really nice, engaging way of leafing your way through the catalogue and therefore ultimately driving the business of the organisation. Now, that's my start screen and as you can imagine, you know, I can go in and customise that to any colour or, or, or put any design on that. Um, the thing is, I have a fairly, fairly uh, conservative view there because it is, you know, I'm out uh, talking to corporates and, and that kind of thing. But I can also log in my son Charlie 
So if I want to hand this tablet over to my son, Charlie, I can uh, almost instantaneously log him in. This is Charlie, he's six, and so he wants to watch movies and play with educational software and, and, and games and so on and so forth. This is his picture password, this is his little brother. So I touch the plane there, I touch the wing there, I swipe up, and again, I'm instantaneously in. Now you see that this is a totally different experience. This is the way he has customized his start screen. Very playful, different colors, and loads of different games, as well as you know, pictures of his, of his, uh, of his baby brother and, and that kind of thing. So the, the beauty of this is twofold. One, if I want to hand this tablet over to Charlie, if we're you know, heading off on a trip, or if he's, if he's playing uh, on his own in, in the kitchen or whatever it is, I'm, I am confident that he won't be able to get access to any of my work stuff. The second thing is, is, a family call, uh, is, a, is a feature called family safety, which allows me to enable uh, what, what time of the day that Charlie can log in, what day of the week, what websites he can access, what apps he can access, what apps he can download. And it will email me on a weekly basis to give me a report showing me every app, every website that he has accessed. So I can uh, let him play with this device Securing the knowledge that my work stuff isn't getting interrupted, but also securing the knowledge that he is being protected by the family safety feature.